Right now, I want to get to uh, Mr. Dwayne Liptag. He is with Magpul, and he is uh, on the line with us. Dwayne, how you doing, sir? Outstanding. How about yourself? I'm good. Thank you so much for your time. I know that you guys are uh, very, very busy there at uh, Magpul, and obviously with uh, today's signing uh, by Governor Hickenlooper of the uh, magazine ban, uh, a life I'm sure got even more interesting, although... Uh, this had to be something that uh, obviously you all have been preparing for for a number of weeks now. Uh, yes, sir. We've uh, we've actually been uh, hoping and uh, and making all of our efforts. You know, fighting this very hard. We'll continue that fight after the fact. Uh, you know, via other avenues that are available to us. But uh, right now, with the signing, the decision you know has been made that uh, with that signing, we'll be leaving Colorado, and uh, indeed, the first PMAGs will be. Uh, started to manufacture outside the state of Colorado within less than 30 days. Uh, and to that end, Dwayne, um, I mean, obviously there's no shortage of states that have been uh, courting Magpul. Um, I, and it sounds like one of the things that uh, you all are looking at is perhaps more than one state uh, uh, benefiting from uh, Colorado's dumb decision. Indeed. There's, uh, we've taken a look, you know, with a, we've traditionally been very faithful to the state of Colorado and tried to keep everything here. But uh, as we looked to, to relocate, we found that it was probably going to make a lot more sense uh, uh, from a business stance as well as just for, from a manufacturing stance to go ahead and uh, be a multi-location uh, corporation. So we've selected some sites already uh, that are uh, will mount here at, uh, at some point in the near future. And we're still looking for a uh, headquarters location and some other manufacturing locations. Wow. Uh, so will, will Magpul have any footprint in Colorado? Uh, we'll, the plan right now is to move everything out, although it's going to be a phased transition. It won't be overnight. It's a, it's a pretty large footprint. Uh, so what we'll, we plan on getting everything out of here, but it's not going to be overnight. Like I said, uh, we'll get, uh, man, or excuse me, magazine manufacturing. We'll get the first thing to get out of here and it will happen relatively rapidly mm -hmm. for as much as we're going to do, but we want to be able to continue to service our customers, uh, while we do that transition. And then, uh, basically, uh, it's depending on timeline for facilities and whatever facility we end up in. If it's a build the suit, it may take some time to, to get that sorted out. So uh, as quick as we can do it, it allows for an orderly transition for our employees uh, and to get uh, things set up in the right location as, uh, as well as being able to continue to service our customers. You know, Dwayne, you talk about the employees, and I, I, I know uh, in this business, uh, you know, industries have a very good relationship uh, with their employees, and and you talk about the uh, the ties to the state of Colorado. Obviously, your employees have uh, strong ties to the community as well. Uh, how, how many employees have come up to you and said, you know what, we, we want to move with you guys? You know, we had a, a meeting this morning over in the production facility, and uh, it was uh, a very, very high percentage uh, are interested in making the move to wherever the next uh, manufacturing location is. So it was, uh, it was very encouraging, and that kind of loyalty is – it's kind of just awe-inspiring to me, and uh, it's one of the things that makes Magpul uh, a great place to be. Well, absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, again, you're showing that dedication to your customers as well. I mean, let's talk about the Colorado Airlift, if we can, for uh, just a little bit, because uh, you all are trying to make sure that your Colorado customers are served before these uh, new laws go into effect. Absolutely. We've, uh, it's, uh, we're not set up for, uh, you know, small order shipping. It's just not one of those things that we're, we're very good at, uh, which is why we have a, a distribution model, but uh, we've added a bunch of shipping stations. We've added some, uh, some temporary customer service stuff to help process these orders. Uh, it's, uh, been in the tens of thousands of, uh, of orders right now. We're only talking about a few hundred thousand magazines that we've shipped so far, which is a pretty small percentage of our, uh, monthly production. But uh, we'll allocate a million or so mags, plus or minus, based on demand, and we expect uh, fully to, to ship close to that before the July 1st deadline. Okay. Uh, you know, Dwayne, let, let's, let's just talk about how this process went down, if we can, here. Because, you know, I thought Magpul did a very good job uh, from very early on pointing out the economic repercussions, pointing out uh, really some of the, 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 the problems with this bill. You had lawmakers in the state of Colorado uh, I think do a very good job of, of, of pointing out that as a practical measure, as a life-saving measure, uh, this bill is not going to accomplish what its authors say it will do. Uh, public support for these measures, nah, not, not, not so much, according to the last poll that I saw. And yet, uh, Governor Hickenlooper still signs these bills today. Was there ever any genuine 
back and forth or any genuine discussion with uh, either the uh, the sponsors of this legislation or the governor's office uh, about these proposals with with you at, and with Magpul? Uh, we had discourse with the governor's office, and we met with many of the legislators. Uh, we learned very quickly in this process that they just weren't interested in hearing the policy argument on many sides. And there was, you know, we were working with many groups, including the NRA, who were carrying the torch for the policy arguments. Uh, we made many of those ourselves, but uh, we found that uh, the only thing they really would listen to is the economic side of things and the legal arguments and so we focused our efforts there working in concert with uh, the other groups that were working largely on the policy side of things uh, of course we don't agree with this on the policy side it's horrible policy but it's also a, a, just a nightmare of legislation from the, the legal vagaries and constitutional problems i mean there's fifth and 14th amendment issues there's I mean, the common use doctrine from Heller and uh, Miller with the strict interpretation from McDonald, this thing will never withstand legal scrutiny. So, but uh, it's just, uh, we have had those discourses, including with the governor's office, but, uh, you know, there was uh, some East Coast influence involved. Uh, every time we were down at the Capitol, we ran into Bloomberg's lobbyists and, uh, and his uh, army of, uh, of uh, individuals down there trying to influence uh, the great American West with New York City money. Yeah. Uh, and, and to that end, Dwayne, you know, hopefully by uh, the time election season rolls around next year in Colorado, it sounds like Magpul won't be in the state of Colorado. But uh, uh, do you think your customers, do you think the voters there in the state of Colorado are going to forget about this between now and Election Day? Uh, I certainly hope not. I don't think they'll forget about it. And we, like I said, we're going to continue the fight here. There are legal uh, uh, possibilities that uh, are on the table and certainly uh, the 2014 elections uh, are going to be very interesting, and uh, we hope to make sure that the folks remember that uh, the folks, the legislators that decided to uh, take away their freedoms when uh, that election date comes up. Absolutely right. Well, listen, Dwayne, again, I really appreciate you coming on the program, sir. I know it is a uh, very busy day for you all there at Magpul, but uh, appreciate your time. Well, thank you, sir. You uh, bet. I'm glad to do it.